Okay, what's up everyone? Daddy Warbucks here, and today we are continuing our playthrough of the Curse of Strahd. Um, the story so far is that the party, once finding out they were trapped within the realm of Ravenloft, has been spending all of their time and resources trying to find a way to slay Strahd so that they can one day be free and resume their lives. Um, their quest for a powerful enough weapon to defeat Strahd has led them to the Amber Temple, where they hope to find the weapon of his brother, a holy knight who was uh, killed due to Strahd's jealousy. Um, they don't know where the weapon is, but they know it is somewhere within the temple. And that is where we are picking up today. The party is currently trapped in the second layer of the Amber Temple because of uh, some unfortunate circumstances last week. And that's where we'll be resuming. Okay, guys. So, at the end of last week, you guys were kind of stuck in this bottom chamber after falling through the uh, hole with the, the trap with the chest. And you were instructed by uh, the lich that seemed to be guarding the way back up that you had to find uh, something interesting to present to him in order to be allowed to leave. <laughs> So, uh, after having barricaded yourselves in and taking a rest, what would you guys like to do? Well, how long do you guys want to stay here? Well, considering as leaving is no longer an option, I suppose we'll have to soldier onward. All right, then. Does it? You want to open the door? Uh, I light a torch. The Noral King uh, knocks an arrow and prepares for uh, anything that might be there. Can I open the door? There is no door. Remember, uh... Oh, that's right, oh, Iron right. Door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can open it. I'm... The, the door it? is open. Ta da! All right. So I'm going to move up up to the uh, the statue that I put in front of the door. I'm going to heave it up and carry it back to where it was. That's so very nice of you. Put it back where it belongs. Um, Dog Woggle? <laughs> no? I know we haven't been on terms recently, and to as a gift, I'm going to give to you, because, you know, I, I don't know if you still, where you still think I stand with Shrod, but and I'm going to pull off a patch and give him another robo. Uh, you see Dog Woggle's eyes light up. He <laughs> kind of moves to towards the boat before stopping briefly and looking at looking at you suspiciously. You're not going to set it on fire again, are you? No, I will not set it on fire again. Where are we going to put the boat? He'll carry, I'll carry it. Yeah. Uh, you could have waited until after we got out of here to use the boat. Dog Ogle just ignores him, runs up, grabs the boat, checks it over. He's really happy with it. He's like, yeah, and uses his rope to uh, to tie it to his back. That's the general shape and layout of the boat. It's real simple, more just kind of like a hollow like log, but it is certainly a boat. <laughs> Yep, so uh, Dog Ogle has it strapped to his back, but in, in a way that he can kind of draw it if he needs to, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the very least, we could take cover behind it in case something happens, right? No, because then my boat will break. <laughs> <laughs> but 
bullets can be really useful, so we don't risk damaging it unless we have to. Here? Here. I think he needs a demonstration, Dogwoggle. <laughs> <sighs> Let me show you. Dogwoggle no, walks over. No, and he takes his boat. And he puts the boat over the top of you and just pushes you down under the boat. Now, Galahan, you can contest this with a, with an athletic yeah, strength like, check. I, I want to see where this is going. So, <laughs> like, okay, so I get underneath the boat, and I'm like, okay. Okay. And then he, and <laughs> now he moves and stands on top of it. <laughs> All right. Can you get out? I don't probably not. Nope, you can't see anything either, right? Is, 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 this, is this the reason we're just going to put somebody underneath this boat and stand on top of the boat? It works. He's done it before. How? Why? <laughs> he, uh, he he picks picks the boat up again and says, yeah, see? In what it's possible a... situation would have that been a good idea? When someone oh, a number of them. <laughs> if you're under the boat, you can't fight anybody. You can't see anything. And you're stuck under a boat. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, I think Galahan is starting to see why his first couple boats were destroyed by the party. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I... I'm out of blind curiosity. I just want to see what happens if we ever need this. So let's. If it comes up, you'll see. And he uh, he puts the boat back. Uh, Narl King, I mean, you can't help but notice the large set of amber doors to your right. That where he went off to? I thought there was like a secret passage or something. No, he walked behind the statue, and then the next time you looked, he was gone. And it would stand a reason that he went through the doors. Okay, then I just misunderstood. Is there like a lot of dust on the ground? Like obvious footprints and footfalls? No. Doesn't, doesn't look like it. There's no, like, trail that got beaten out? No. <laughs> uh, however, as you approach these large amber doors, you you can see that um, even though they are this polished amber and, and they're very shiny as it is, they almost seem to gleam. Open them. Let's someone go. I'm going to ready my uh, crossbow just in case anything decides to jump out at us. Dogwoggle. Dog the boat real quick. Dogwoggle, go open the door. Yeah, yeah. Dogwoggle will move over. And he'll uh, try and push the doors open. Yeah. Unfortunately, trying to force the doors open, you prove unsuccessful. Mm. Locked. Is there any obvious keyhole? No. There is an obvious lack of keyhole or do doorknob or handle. Just that so faint glow that solid. seems to radiate from the doors. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> Go just look around some more. Can I <laughs> Your firebolt just kind of bounces off and does nothing. Uh, dog Ruggle turns. Hey! You better watch it with that. It's fine. I'm not going to hit you. He just kind of. Squints at you a little bit. He's more concerned about the boat on his back. Nope. He's burnt me a lot. 
Oh. You need to stop planning there. Okay, so that way it doesn't work. Let's go a different way. Mm, which way? Oh, there's a big hallway to my right or my left. Okay. As you move forward, this arched hall rises to a height of 20 feet. You can see your reflections in the amber glaze on the walls and floors. But the images don't seem to mirror your movements. Instead, uh, your reflections in the floors and halls, they seem to wave their arms in warning, and they scream in terror as you move through the chamber. I, start I like to notice my own reflection in like the wall, and I try to communicate with it. Like, it probably can't hear me, but I, like, wave my hand, make hand signals, does it respond? No, it does nothing except make these, these flailing motions and, and, and make silent screams of terror. You just motion to your own reflection. Mm-hmm. Fascinating, isn't it? <sighs> um... Stop, well, this stop, is a stop. warning if I've ever seen one. Dogwoggle, how far can you see? Let me check. Um, you're not very far. Not um, far. However, yeah. as you're standing here, okay, uh, you, as you guys, you move through this chamber, you, you take note of the uh, reflections, and then you hear something um, coming from the hallway to the south. Um, it sounds like, like oh, an elderly woman's voice and you hear gibberish words followed by a strings of curses. But we don't understand what she's saying? Uh, no. Gibberish? Nope. Oh, okay. Are reflections reacting to the voice at all? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> there are illusions! <laughs> Spell it out for me! <laughs> Okay, so you're just gonna walk up and yell at him, Dog Woggle. Yep. Everybody, roll initiative. So oh, the 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 old woman turns and looks at all of you, and you can see that her skin is a sallow green, and that she has these trinkets and baubles hanging off. She looks absolutely putrid, and as she turns and looks, she cackles with glee. <laughs> Sisters, it seems that since this door vexes us, the temple has provided a way for us to calm our nerves. Let's have some fun, shall we? And all the sisters, you see them point their, their hands out towards you. And as they do, you see uh, these three flying broomsticks rocketing towards the party. <laughs> this is so cool, what the fuck? Language! Literally the witch the- oh, sorry, my bad. I don't like this. It's literally a witch the fight. This is really cool. Alright, uh, it looks like... Galahan, you are first. Alright, um... Let's try this. This spell. And then I will move. Well, what type? All of them? Oh, all of them. certain types, not. Oh, derp. I do that. Yeah, it's, it's all of them. And then I will go... So who's the one willing creature? You? Yeah, I'll cast on myself. And then let's see How's if going, I can How's it going, Toronto Gash? Judd! We'll engage the brooms. And...
Ah, <laughs> uh, we just started. And what's your action, Judd? Um, I'm going to cast Scorching Ray. Target? Target. Um, I can select three different targets, right? Yes. The, so I'm asking you, who are you attacking? Yeah. Um, I've each broomstick. So I need. That's a miss, and that's a hit, and that's a hit. Are they? Ooh, nice. Nope. Okay, so eleven and twelve. Oh wait, I think you burned all your spells off. Yeah. I'm re Finished. Yep. Dog woggle. All right, let's have a look. Where's their cauldron? Nope, not moving like that. Dog Rogel's gonna just run past one of the rooms. Okay. Right around them and engage with one of the. Uh, the <laughs> I'm actually gonna kill that. Galahan, what's the weapon attack? The Sentinel for making an attack on a target that's not with it. The uh, thingy jiggy? Hold on. Yeah. And the creature within five feet makes attack against a target other than you. You use your reaction. Dog, well, you don't sure. have Sentinel, right? Nope. Alright, it's a nope. hit for four. Okay, and then okay. Dogwoggle moves, make your attack. Yep. Yep, I'm gonna rage and then uh, reckless attack the first one. Alright, one at a time. So I'll roll it again. 17. So, yeah. Same damage. There we go. Oh, what spells does she have? Does she have shields? So the first one, no. and then uh, I'm assuming it's still up. Uh, no. No. Witches are squishy. Bleh. Okay. Uh, then I'm not going to make a second attack. That's the end of my turn. All right, the brooms being, uh, uh, yep, being none of those things, they're going to attack Galahad. <laughs> and bonk, bonk, bonk. Bonk, bonk, bonk. <laughs> I think only two of those hit. I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, first yeah, two, yeah. the seven and the five. So right. take those, please. <laughs> Maintain concentration through both hits. Poop sauce. Then it'll be the witches. They uh, raise their hands, and they, they cackle with rage. Yeah! We will avenge our sister! And uh, <laughs> um, the first one is going to cast Hideous Laughter on Dogwoggle. Yeah! Wisdom save. All right. I know, you're really good at those, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep! You okay? So Dogwoggle starts laughing hysterically, falls prone, and is incapacitated. Ooh! Yeah, he was just laughing. <laughs> Avenge! <laughs> uh, incapacitated. Oh, so you're just you're incapacitated. Yeah, there's not a thing for that, but that's okay. The second witch, the one not concentrating on hideous laughter, um, she is simply going to point a finger out towards Judd and towards Galahan, 
And she points and she mutters one word. Sleep. And we are going to cast it. So 32 points. Damn, damn, that's not a... Oh, well, okay. So Judd's gonna Judd's gonna rock it out a counter spell. That sleep wasn't going to affect either of you. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Uh, uh it's one, two. Uh, that is gonna be... Well, they're gonna spread out like this. And then that'll be the end of their turn. Narl King, you're up next. I aim my bow at the witch to the far left. Before you make any and... rolls, um, you feel something kind of a chill runs up your spine. Something's not right. Uh, I need you to attack with disadvantage. Oh, okay. Thirteen and eleven. Actually, uh, it doesn't matter. Both of those will hit, and two arrows to the witch on the left is going to kill her. Okay. Would you believe me if I said that particular witch was the one that cast sleep? <laughs> All right, and um, as part of dread ambusher, since the last one hit, I will take another one. Absolutely. Another hit for 11, and then the extra damage for Ambusher, please. Twelve. Okay, and I'll duck back behind this wall, and that'll be my turn. As you move again behind the wall, that, that, that chill that, that you had felt earlier seems to dissipate. Thorn. All right. I'm going to come right on out over to here. Well, a little bit further. Uh, oh, step forward. Step forward. Are all of these down here dead? No, that that one you just pinged is not. Oh, okay. Um, and from here, I will. Let's see. Yep, I want to cast guiding bolt towards that one I just pained. Oh, God. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> that, that, sir, is a miss. Yeah, that, 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 that's on my turn. Ear toes. Well, let's move 25 there so I can see what's going on. You said that was a uh, twenty-five feet of move there. Yes, it was. Okay. Do you have uh, an action or bonus action? Bounce. Uh, before you roll, you. Your uh, even uh, before you change, your skin prickles in goose flesh. You, you, there's a, a very strong, pervasive sense of wrongness. All of your attacks are with disadvantage, please. For those that are watching, you notice this purple aura that is around Judd. Uh, third one will hit the the uh, bite for six. Well, it'll actually uh, you chomp down and you snap one of the brooms in half, and that'll be my turn. If you recall, Galahad, it's your turn. All right, I'm gonna attack twice. Gonna attack one with and disadvantage. Go down and then attack the other. Uh, if you recall, with disadvantage. 
No. Okay. Uh, our young lizard. Wait, is it like a frightened thing? It's like a shut up and roll disadvantage thing. <laughs> 20 is still a hit for 11. And uh, yes, you do break the first of the brooms. <laughs> Alright, attack again. Yeah, yeah. That will... doesn't matter. <laughs> nah, yeah, because whatever you roll, that's the one we're keeping. <laughs> Uh, you lose your grip as you attack, and your weapon flies into the, uh, square beyond. Uh, I need you- you can make a deck save to try and hold on to it. With disadvantage. Okay, you- you hang on to it. But it makes you very suspicious. What is going on? So it's going through my protection against good and evil, so it's definitely yep. not normal. Well, that's- hmm. Protection against good and evil doesn't make you a mute. Shut, shut, shut up, just shut up. Judd? Anyway, our little lizard died. Like, legit um, died. I'm but for some reason, he's still here. Maybe it's because some malicious entity has taken control of his body in order to further hinder the party. 24 is a hit, and that is a dead broom. And, uh... That's the end of combat. Didn't we still have one witch left? Yeah. Oh, um, nah, she did. She had one hit point. She bleeds to death. <laughs> I don't know. What do you want? Uh, I retreat my dog. Gorg, or your. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, just. They said they were gonna get revenge on me. <laughs> do we still feel the goosebumps as combat, or is it continue? Um, yeah. There, it's it's like this cold, icy feeling that goes from your neck all the way down your spine. Alright, who wants to rummage through the bodies then? Yeah, I'll rummage the bodies. No, Do Lane doesn't know what's going on. Work on them? He doesn't uh, know until you do your investigation check. Where was it? 32, 32, 32! There we go. Uh, uh, yeah, looking through the bodies, you find all manner of, of uh, unholy objects and, and uh, testaments to profane rituals performed in years past. Well, I'm glad we have broomstick and a torch. If no one objects, I'm going to take all the bodies and the broomsticks and just light them on. You know, I like... Why? Because less evil in the world. Also, I don't trust this place one bit. There is a lich out there. I'd rather have no bodies than leave a trail of them. Do it, dog woggle. Do it. No, wait, you do, you do, do it. it. All right. So I will, after he's done with his investigation, I'll pile up the broomsticks and such, and I'm going to light them all up yes. along with the body. Sure. <laughs> I, I don't want this lich to be like, we turn around, there's like a thousand zombies behind. I'd be okay with that. Rick, this is interesting. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Oh, no. Just if we turned up. With an army of zombies and said, you wanted something interesting. Army of zombies. So at the end of the hall here, you can see two doors. Very small, only, uh, you know, four feet wide, but uh, very narrow. Again, carved out of amber. Um, and as they stand here, you can feel the presence of powerful magic on the other side. Of both of them? Both of them. Doug Wago opens the door that he stood in front of. Oh god. It'll be fine. Okay, the door is shut fast in front of you. It doesn't seem to budge when you pull at it. Then push it. Yep, try pushing. 
<laughs> it's not a, it's not a push door. It's a, I mean, if you want to try and force the door, you're welcome to try. Sure. I believe it's twenty. Uh, athletics. I'll assist. Yeah, it'll, it'll, and you're assisting. Okay. Uh, actually, even w with you assisting, it's gonna be a normal roll because you have that feeling. Just you know, it's like your strength is being drained from you. It's wondrous item time. Okay. The best time. Of so the athletics, game. normal roll. It's a wondrous item. I'm sure uh, someone 14. will end up with a nice cursed item. Unfortunately, that's not enough to force the door open. No, Ten. it's locked. <laughs> Dog Ogle just moves on, tries, to, tries the next one. Same. These doors are held shut by some otherworldly force. Can we still see? Can we still see the ref our our reflections? Yes, and the whole time they're just shaking their heads slowly side to side while mouthing, No! Dog Boggle can't let read, so he just looks at it. How do we open the door? And he's like pointing at the door. You could try to force this one as well. well he's asking his reflection. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, I, I legit am. An ersatz eye. But yeah, getting oh, mad. Again. And force the door. All right, another athletics check. Think I should give it to him? Okay, uh, 23 is not sufficient. You feel the, the door nudge like you almost have it, but it's not quite enough. As soon as it moves that little, that little centimeter, it pulls shut and, and remains closed in front of you. We still have more places to explore. We can keep stupid nerd magic doors. <laughs> Dog Ogle just turns and leaves in a huff. A magic. I want to try to open this. You would like to try as well. Uh yeah, you can try Eritos. Uh, not with disadvantage because um, you feel that sensation seems to has has left you for the moment. Um. Unfortunately, 19 is still not sufficient. <laughs> These guys are going to be stuck down here forever. Like, what do I do? Uh, well, actually, I, I see another door up here. So I'm going to try this one. Oh, yeah? Yep. You find this door is not locked. Dog Ogle opens it. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Hello? Uh, as you open this door, and I know the door's not actually open, but I will get there. Uh, as you open this door, the furnishings of this bare stone room have been completely crushed and trampled. It looks like they've been smashed and pulverized into, into this fine bits and powdered chunks along the floor. And the reason why is immediately apparent standing here scraping its head uh, along the 10 foot high ceiling is a large vaguely man-shaped construct made of dark wood and riveted iron its helmed head stares blindly in your direction and as you enter the chamber it it begins to move malice in its in its eyes dog Wuggle smiles and shouts i'm taking his leg and charges it. <laughs> Taking his leg! What do you see? <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. said it was made out of wood. Wood and iron. Dark wood and iron, I think, was the description. Let me see if I have a handout. Of course I have a handout. Yep, Dumb Wogo's taking a leg. That would look great at the bottom of Dog Wogle's knee. I don't think you're going to be able to attach that to your leg. <laughs> no, the, like, the knee down... Well, no. The, the shit, it's... No. It's hunched over and scraping its head. Yeah, it'd be much too... Anyway. The band can try, right? Yeah, Judd, don't crush Dog Wogle's dreams. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Narl King, you are up first. And no, you don't have disadvantage. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. As you move forward, bow in hand, that sensation returns, and, and you feel weakness thriving in your body. <laughs> they're gonna pick up on it. <laughs> like, they're gonna... <laughs> Oh, 17 is a hit, and the second one will miss. Okay. Wait a minute, is it? No, he doesn't have any resistances. Dogwoggle. All right, so Dogwoggle will raise. And I'll move into the room. Moving around it to try and grab its attention. As you um, charge it. forward, your strength returns. And the, as the blood rushes to your arms and face, you can feel uh, once again that you are strong. Attack without disadvantage. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to go one step further, and I'm going to recklessly attack. Okay. Uh, hit. Hit. Uh, and then I'm going to recklessly attack again. Probably read this whole block, right? Uh... And that will end my turn. Ooh, ah, yes. Oh, yeah, God, yes. Ooh. Wait, 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 wait. No, no. Uh, hit, hit for... Oh, God. Math. 2039. Haha! You won't best me this time, Nemesis! <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Judd. Going to move in. <laughs> Why is he running in? <laughs> and this room's small, and I don't like it. Uh, you would have disadvantage because ranged attack and melee. Got it. There's Still a hit. One. And that's it. Irtos? I'm going to take one quick step back, embrace myself for this coming attack, go into rage, and pounce. Okay. Uh, miss, miss, miss. It was still set for disadvantage. Do I have disadvantage on Yes, them? yeah, if you look in chat, I posted right before you attacked the uh, dis. Oh, okay. Uh, Thorn? Actually, you know, if you set it for advantage disadvantage, I actually can't tell because of the dark mode. So, so I, I just manually look at whatever number is correct. All right, Thorin. All right, I am going to move up to here, and looking at the way everything seems to be situated, I don't think all of us should be in such a narrow space or this close to each other. So I'm moving up long enough to cast Bless on Galahan, uh, the Gnarl King, and Judd. Judd? And then I'm going to step back a few yeah. paces. Wings, wings. There we go. Blessed. Kill him. Okay. Uh, did you say you blessed me, brother? Yep, that's what the angel wings are there. Oh, sweet, yep. thank you. All right, let me add that to my sheet.
Oh God. All right. I will move forward to see what's in the room. That's 20 feet. Oh, this looks like a very crowded room. Uh, can I get? Can you get where? Yeah. So I'll use my main. And uh, let's test my slightly. The curse is on what guy? I have disadvantage, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, still a hit? And so is the second hit. Okay. Uh, that is my turn. Yeah. So this thing, uh... He picks up his, his hand, and he starts just attacking wildly around him. Um, I guess we'll attack uh, Galahan and Dogwoggle, in that order. Yeah, uh, advantage against me. Okay. So there's uh, attack on Galahan. Take 12, please. And then Dogwoggle. And yes, I know you're going to Sentinel. It's fine. Uh, Dogwoggle looks like you're taking... Oh, I have advantage. Didn't matter. All right, you're taking six. And then there's the Sentinel. And then it'll be back to the Gnarl King. Okay. It didn't roll the blast that time. I don't know. It, well, it was already a hit, so... I mean... Oh, my bad. And I'd like to roll a d4 for uh, the first one. Um, no, 27's a hit, as is 19. You are not attacking with disadvantage. Have disadvantage. No, no, you do not feel that uh, that numbing sensation that you had experienced earlier at the moment. Oh, okay, well, all right, that's fine. Uh, that's my turn. Dogwoggle! All right. Uh, Dogwoggle, once again, is going to reckless attack and continue his assault on the shield guard. Uh, am I still at disadvantage? Yes, you are. Okay, so I'll be attacking at normal. Uh, both hit. Oh, God. 36 damage. Judd? Uh, miss? Oh, uh, I can pull bless right here. Will that still miss it? Yeah, no, even with the bless, you missed. Uh, Ear toast. Uh, just attack him. Disadvantage. Miss, miss, miss. Alright, that's my turn. Thorin? All right. So I don't forget. Move forward. Is it ERS or ERZ? To here, long enough to see what the hell is going on. Um, hey, I'm going to cast Sacred Flame at it. Uh. How? <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> There's literally no room for it to maneuver, but it dodged out of the way. <laughs> yep. Go over here. Galahan. All right, let's attack. Don't forget this. Uh, nope. Uh, no again. All right, and that's it. 
Guardian, uh, smashy things. Dog Woggle hurts. Let's attack him twice. <laughs> You're sinking you. <laughs> Look at all those ones. And remember, advantage against me. Yeah. No. Take a whopping ten da or five damage. Jesus. Arrow King. Okay. Uh, two more strikes with the arrows. Pretty sure this is where he goes down. 24. Yep, okay. Uh, the arrows pierce through the, the construct, and as they do, you see it, its large frame begins to rumble and shake as it collapses to the floor. Do you, do you still want the leg? Uh, Dog Ogle takes the, uh, the, the leg from the knee down and see if it if the if the size matches sure yeah it, it it's a little bit taller so you you you're going to have to grind it down a little but uh yeah you could you, you could totally have a gundam leg <laughs> 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 look at the picture it, that's what it like from the knee down it looks like a gundam leg <laughs> yep <laughs> dog goggles taking the leg <laughs> okay. Next time we rest, I'm going to try and fix this to to the the leg. So are you gonna put it like over it, like? Uh... Yep. <laughs> oh, no. I don't understand how this is gonna work. All right. Uh, what now, guys? There were more. Oh, Actually, wait a minute, Naro King. What's isn't your passive perception like crazy high? Yeah, it's uh, fifteen. Uh, as you look around the chamber, like I said, everything that was once in here is in ruins, smashed and stomped by the Shield Guardian. But you do see on the floor a single slip of parchment. Uh, let's give them okay, a password. I pick Which it password? up and examine it. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's. Where, where, where? On this password is a single word. And that word is it's very strange. Um, you can't determine what language it is for the life of you. But the word as written, it says Thangob. Out of curiosity, is it... Uh, I can understand primordial, just in it's case... It's not primordial, no. <laughs> it's some it's some even crazier language that nobody in this party has ever heard of <laughs> because it doesn't exist in the player's handbook <laughs> okay I just uh, show it to my compatriots and see what they think <laughs> who cares <laughs> So wait, is Dog Waddle carrying the leg now? Yep. <laughs> I'd imagine he would tie it to the boat which he wears on his back in place of a pack. <laughs> yeah, I just thought he put it inside yeah. the boat. Pretty much, like, where, where, where he would normally, like, tie his great axe if he needs both of his hands, he now has the leg. And he just carries his great axe in his hands. There was 33F. Oh, that's on the other oh side. God. There is another door right there if you all want to go down there. Nah, they're, all, uh, they're, they're all locked with nerd magic. No, 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 that one. Yeah, that one. Is this one locked? I, I'm not going to open it. I want to level. Uh, give me a second to check. No, door is not locked. Open. Opening the door, you see a white marble bed standing in the center of this bare stone room. Its mattress has long since rotted away, and there are golden hawks perched atop the bed's corner posts. The room's remaining furnishings have been reduced to dust-covered heaps. There are cobwebs covering arcane sigils that appear to have been carved into the wall. Sleeping hey, Steve, the, uh, how you doing? Thanks for the host, buddy. Appreciate you. Persona here. Got it. 
could I attempt to decipher the sigils? Arcana. Uh, that's good enough. You see that the sigils that were placed on the walls, uh, at one point they were wards designed to protect the room's contents from theft. But over over many, many, many years, uh, the magic is gone and no longer harms anyone. Which would also be indicated by the fact that there is like little of value left in this chamber. Other than the bed, which looks far too heavy to remove, there is nothing else. Is there anything under the bed? No, there's nothing under the bed. <laughs> that I'll one for Judd. Do a random investigation check to see if the, these, uh, whoever was in here. Maybe uh, an investigation for what? Uh... I'm just gonna look around the bed to see, uh, since it's the only real landmark, see if there's uh, like something around it may have been missed. No, nope. no, sir. Nope. Um, anything that might have once been of value or of importance has been removed. There is literally nothing in the chamber but the bed hmm. and debris. I'm going to lay on. Wait. While he's uh, looking around. Okay, I guess. Do is it is it comfortable at least? Is it a comfortable bed? No, there's no mattress. Remember, it's rotted away. Hey, Bree. Well, let us continue onward. Onward. <laughs> well, we got a staircase. What well, what was over there? Any points in the direction where there was a there was a corridor before, but we kind of didn't really see anything. We woke up and then went into the room to rest. Well, dog wobble didn't really see very much of it. I think I was unconscious for a majority of this part, so I don't really remember. It was where the Nothics were. They ran off to there. Yeah, three crazy monsters went a lot of sleep. Huh. So they ran off. They ran off. Let's go this way. There might be something there. Eartul <laughs> hisses and shakes his head, but continues following. Okay, uh, what would you like to do? Well, we got four ways we can go. Two doors and either up or down. Oh, wait a minute, I have to give you a description for this hall. Derp a derp. Uh, glistening amber coats the walls and ceiling of this enormous hall like sculpted honey, and dust covers the black marble floor. The vaulted ceiling is 25 feet high and set into the walls at a height of 5 feet are amber ledges lined with life-like alabaster statues of all manner of animals. Um, many of the statues have fallen off their perches and have shattered onto the floor below. You can see an amber door in the, north, in the northern wall stands open, and there are four other such amber doors to the west and south that remain shut. Are there any of the little statues hmm. left? Some of them. Is there a dragon? What is that toy? It's uh, one of those. Uh, Dolgogl's going to move to this door and try and open it. I don't know. That door? That door. Can you roll initiative for me, please? Sure. Uh, as you open this door and uh, you look inside, you are greeted with a very strange sight. First of all, uh, standing in the back of this chamber, okay, very large, very obvious, you all see this. 
Cop. You see this. And, and as you stare at it, it roils with skulls and human faces that kind of um, come to the forefront of, of this creature's exterior and then are swallowed back inside. Also, on the back wall, you see... Come on now. You see this. And uh, it appears Judd has been encased in this red gel and is lying unconscious and is currently tethered to this large red mass. What the... And I look at Judd. As you do, um, the Judd that has been following you and adventuring with you 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 see he kind of uh, shudders as his skin quivers, and he lashes out, his arm elongating and becoming a red jelly that mimics the one inside the chamber. Wait, but wait, which wait, one wait. is the real one? <laughs> wait. Well then. Uh. Interesting. That Galahad, does 14 hit you? Uh, no. Okay, so, uh, Judd, you're sitting out this fight. <laughs> oh. I mean, were you really fighting in the first place? That's the real question. Okay, um, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, yes. Okay, so so the the Oblex is going to get the first turn in combat, and you see it doesn't move. Instead, um, you see Judd moves forward, and uh, again, it, it's his arms kind of elongate into those reddish jelly-like tendrils as he attacks uh, both Galahan and Dogwoggle. In that order. Galahan and Dogwoggle. Then, then, it moves forward. And you can see it, Judd's body opens up, like, at the sternum, right? And as it does, this jelly kind of spreads out, overlapping Dogwoggle, as uh, it tries to coat you in this, this jelly. I need you to make a wisdom save, please. Okay. That is a fail. <laughs> do I get any? Yeah. Do I get a bonus next to a power then? Uh, yeah. You are within the radius, so that's not a fail. That's a pass because I don't know what the mod is, but it makes it eighteen. It's three. So two, 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 two. Uh, da 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 Wait. Uh, let's see. Or. Um, yeah, so you take nothing, I believe. That's a lot of text. Um, it, but you can, you, you see it just kind of, like, leans out, and it tries to grab you, and then nothing. Uh, and then, Dogwoggle, it's your turn. Okay. Dogwog was like, well, I don't know which one's the real one, so I'm going to squish them both. Best be safe. Dog so this, one, this one being stood next to me, I'm going to start with that one. Uh, I'm going to bonus action rage. I'm going to reckless attack uh, the Judd that's standing next to me. I do. Yep. 2039, right? All right, as you hit it, um, your axe just kind of cuts right through this jelly. And, uh, oh. We'll just subtract it from here, not from there. Um, as your axe cuts through this jelly, you can see that the, the judge just kind of like, it 
and reforms around it. Hmm. Well, Judd didn't do that last time. <laughs> so I'm going to move into the room. Uh, stepping away from Judd will provoke an opportunity attack. Oh, Sentinel. <laughs> that, that's fine. Bah! Wait. Did that you... has advantage. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, and then you, Sentinel, and... Same thing. Uh, you attack. Uh, actually, yes. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. As you stand next to the not Judd, um, you feel that that icy sensation still gripping you with terror. Not terror, because it's not fear. Anyway, uh, fourteen is a miss. Ooh, that's my turn. Well, that's my reaction. Darrow King. Okay. Um, okay. Give me a minute. Okay, I'm going to just uh, knock a few arrows and let them loose into the Judd Doppelganger. Or Judd Jelly, whatever. Okay, does the last one hit? Alright, let me see here. Um, the first one hits. The second one at a 15 does not. Okay, then that's my turn. Gallahan! Alright, as a bonus action, and I need I'm to put to the Oblex spells in his stupid... I don't know why they don't auto format this spell casting. Uh, DC and then 18. I will try to attack the Jelly Judd twice. Cool. Nope. Uh, you're going to do the thingy jiggy, right? What thingy? Oh. Uh, you, don't you do a fumble table? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing you were talking about. Oops. Uh, uh weapon slip. <laughs> You're good at those. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, dex check. Check? Okay. Yeah, it will save. It should be a save. Look at this. I don't know if I disadvantage on saves as well. Yeah, so you're you're you still have that icy numbness. You're and since you can't really feel the the grip of the sword in your hand, you just kind of whoop and it goes flying ten feet ahead. Cool. Okay, I'm going to as my weapon flies out of my hand. Rather than try to go after, I'm just going to use my second attack to punch the not Judd in the face. Cool. <laughs> So it's um, 1d20 plus strength. Uh, yes, for the to hit, yeah. Uh, so that's oh. a hit. And you're not proficient with unarmed strikes. I Oh, yeah, that you, you are at disadvantage. Okay, that's not a hit. I lied. Yeah. Okay, and that's... Uh, Irtos, you are next. All right, I'll take a step forward to there and pause. Disadvantage? Uh, are you next to the Judd? No, you do. No, you are not. I don't think I'm. No, I punched into the room next to Dog Waddle. Yes, yeah, you are not at disadvantage. Fusion Dimension Door, Dominate Person here. Hallucinatory terrain. I think that's one in hypnotic pattern. Those are my cast. One Is it small enough for me to knock over with that with it, with it, a claw attack to hit? Uh, no, it's immune to prone. 
All right, bonus action all of rage because I forgot to do that before I attack. That's okay. Uh, the first one will hit for seven. There you go. Wait. Oh, counts as magical. Okay, Thorin, you're up. Oh, it doesn't have. I'm not getting anywhere near this thing, so I'm just going to throw a sacred flame at it. At the Judd? Yeah, you can't see that. At the Judd, not Judd? Uh, yeah, he eats 11. But was he ever Judd ever, really? Okay, the Oblex is going to take its turn. Oh, I don't know. I do want to attack. I don't I went through all that to to format these though. You look sound like some sort of other natural. No, that's late. You don't want to do that. Uh thought if a Q pattern appears for a moment, vanish, you sure sure. Alright, nope, we're just gonna attack. Okay. So the creature um is going to attack. Uh, once using Judd again to, well, the not Judd, to attack Galahan with the pseudopod. Bloink. Uh, that looks like a hit. Wait a minute. Don't you have, uh, it's Shield of Faith, right? Your, your AC is higher? Yeah, my AC is okay. 20. It still hits. I don't know why in my head I was thinking Sanctuary. Um, and then the... Oblex itself is going to attack, um, striking out at Irtos. <laughs> For uh, 17, 22. For 11, because I was raging. Um, well, it's psychic damage. You're not, you're not a totem barb, are you? No, I think he's talking about the bludgeoning part. Well, the bludgeoning wouldn't be 11. That would only be 8. 8 and 5. Yeah, okay. Oh, all right. See, again, math! My nemesis! <laughs> uh, and then uh, after those two pseudopod tendrils kind of lash out, um, the Oblex itself is going to try and consume Dogwoggle again. So, Dogwoggle, another wisdom save, please. Okay. Do it. What? Oh, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Wait, doesn't don't we have all disadvantage on saves? No. Oh, weird. Okay. Dogwoggle, it's your turn. All right. Dogwoggle is going to try and chop up the jelly. For all the good it'll do. So chop, chop. Uh, with reckless attack. Yeah, it's a hit. And this is the this second, is attack. second attack. Yep, that's the two. Uh, that's the end of my turn. Now, oh, King. Okay, uh, does the Jolly Judd appear in any way injured by our attacks? Your attacks are hitting it. It's taking damage. I'll tell you what. I'm, it's a gimme. Uh, because your passive perception is so high, when you look at Jelly Judd, knowing that it's not actual Judd, you can see that there is this small, like, like quarter-inch, you know like tendril that's like slithering along the floor that connects it to the main to the to the oblex and it seems that judd and the oblex are connected they're one and the same okay which case i cast hunter's mark on the oblex and um let loose two more arrows on On Jelly Judd or the Oblex? Uh, the Oblex itself. 
Okay. Um, the reason I'm asking is because I'm looking through your token, and through the doorway, it's mostly obscured. But here, if you move here, let's say that's fine. Okay. Uh, 12, 19, 23. Yep, you shoot it twice. It hurts really bad. Callahan. All right. Uh, he did not say anything about the cord, right? Because if he didn't, then I'm just going to keep going. All right. So, um, looking really bad right now. Uh, I'm going to, <laughs> as my main action, I'm going funny. to burn uh, 24 lay on hands to bring me back up to 30 HP. Okay. And then uh, you said, in what direction did my sword go? You said it was within 10 feet of me? Or, yeah, or... It, 10 feet forward, so it would be behind Jelly Judd. Oh, okay. Then I'll just use my movement to, like, circle <laughs> around Jelly Judd and pick up my sword as my Sure. Action. Yep, you can do that. And that's it. Uh, your toast. Miss hit. Miss. Doesn't matter though. That claw attack, uh, as you slice through the creature, the, all those faces around the exterior begin to wail in agony. And, and it quivers and falls to the ground with a splash. As it does, uh, Jelly Judd also falls to the ground with a look of agony on its face. And the Judd that is um, captured that is, you know, kind of like stuck to the wall here with Jelly, falls to the ground. Okay, now we got to make sure. I'm going to move over to Jelly Judd and just tap him on the head with my axe and see if he wobbles. Uh, he does not wobble. He is also unconscious. You can see that... Uh, he doesn't even appear to be breathing. Oh, no. Okay, I pick him up and start carrying him. I can eat him later. Should we check for a pulse first? Can I do a medicine check? Uh, dead? Yeah, you okay. can do a medicine check. Yeah, I'll hand it over to uh, Galahan. Am I still disadvantaged? Uh, no, no. With the Oblex defeated, that aura seems to have disappeared completely. Okay. Um, as you examine the body, you you think he might still be alive. Oh, really? Great. Uh, <laughs> let, let's test how alive that is. I will burn one lay on hand to try and bring him at conscious for one HP. <laughs> There is no response. Well, hmm. He, he's not dead, but he's certainly not well off right now. Anyway, uh, Dog Rubble picks him up and examines him because he wants to ascertain how much meat's on his bones, see if he's actually going to be worth roasting. <laughs> And check what condition he's in. So I guess I'll make a medicine check. Sure. <laughs> Easy tell. Well. Looks tasty. <laughs> uh, looking at Judd, and you hold him up close to your face and get a good look at him, it, it looks like he's still breathing. If you try, you can save him. Can I... <laughs> hey, hey. I think he's alive. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to try and help here and try and use cure wounds on Judd. On our Judd. At least I hope it's our Judd. Okay, the uh, cure wounds doesn't seem to have any effect. Uh, Dobrogle is going to slap him real hard and shout as loud as he can, WAKE UP! His, his, when you smack him, his head rocks 
Uh, his entire body is limp. There's no resistance. <laughs> Can we get a third medicine check? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do a medicine check. We're all just gonna roll below five. This is how this is gonna. <laughs> oh my god! There it is. <laughs> really? I, I I even told Chet DC is ten. Like it's not like it's a hard check. <laughs> I'm tired of this game already. Okay. Um, examining the body, you are able to determine two things. One, Judd is most certainly dead. And two, it he appears to have been killed yesterday. Do we have any way of uh, fixing and amending this situation? I, uh, I lack the ability to uh, revive people. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Hmm. Doggle will, um, is just gonna dip his finger in some of the jelly that's on the floor and taste it. Uh, I would imagine that this particular brand of jelly probably tastes like cigarette butts and jalapeno dip. It is not pleasant. Okay. It's yeah, a spicy, mashy, blech. <laughs> but that might go well with lizard meat. However, you do find another scrap of parchment on the floor. Same as before, a word written in a strange language. And it simply reads, Gaviton. Well, we have no way of uh, recovering our fallen friend, I take it. I look at everybody. Absolutely none. None at all. Mm. Well, we just can't leave his body here. And dog will take the question. Why not? He's not using it. We might get hungry. Shouldn't we pay proper respects to the fallen as opposed to eating? The proper respects? He's not a Goliath. He's a lizard. You eat lizards. Uh, not everyone's a Goliath, okay? No, but he's a lizard. Didn't well, I guess he actually did not give you anything because that was not him. Hmm. Wait a sec. I'm gonna go to where the Judd, not Judd, was. Are his items still there? Uh, no. It looks like whenever he was killed and removed from the party, everything he was carrying was lost or destroyed. Oh no. Oh man. Which means so which means found... that that the boat he gave you was a fake. Uh... <laughs> Your boat dissolves into reddish goo. It's all part of the illusion. Dog Rubble drops to his knees and starts hammering <laughs> the ground. Not again! <laughs> well as Dog Goggle deals with that level of greed, I'm going to suggest we burn the body. Uh, Dog Ogle first is going to grab Judd by the ankles and say, You've you fooled me for the last time. And he's going to swing him as hard as he can so that his head cracks against a wall and splats it. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, 
well. Oh. Galahad just like slaps his face with his palm, and a- after dog woggle dog is done, he'll burn. <laughs> there's like some. It looks like there's some like broken tables and well, stuff. Uh, Dog Ogre is really angry now, so he's going to start storming up here. I think he's just really, <laughs> really mad because Judd was his friend and he misses him. <laughs> Dog Ogre is going to kick this. Dog Ogre is going to kick this door open and attack anything he sees on the other side. Oh my! Uh, right, let me pull my notes up for that. Thirty-eight. Well, Judd was dead this whole time. Wow. Okay. Now. Well, we did burn his body, so... Uh, kicking in the door, entering the room. This room was, at one point, a bed chamber. It's littered with broken furnishings. Scattered about the room are the remains of a bed, a wardrobe, two trunks, some candlesticks, a desk, a bookshelf, and chairs. There are torn up books, quill pens, and tattered clothes strewn about. Cool. Nothing, nothing of note in there. Don't go and move along. <laughs> He puts the boot to the next door. Although, actually, I, I think I can see... Uh, you can. See actually, both of you can. I think the room is illuminated in there. Let me see real quick. No, the room's not illuminated. But you guys both ha- uh, ha- can see. You can see in the room above the four Nonthics that you encountered yesterday. Still very wounded. And as they see you approach, the four of them flee to the back wall. And they're kind of huddled there in a big mass. Please, sirs! Please! Nope. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the arrow rockets through the air and hits one and it falls over dead. The other three begin shrieking. Oh! Oh my god! Monsters! Please! We will help! We help! Why do these voices sound familiar? You can help us by dying. <laughs> All right, so Irtos is running in. Uh, Dog Woggle's running in. Go ahead and make your tax. We're not even going to do initiative. These guys are, are mortally wounded already. You missed. What, what you missed. There you go. Okay, so there's one attack. There's two. There is one uh, remaining. And, and the last, the the last of the Nothics, uh, he has his head bound, bowed down to the ground, its arms splayed out, and it is literally begging you, please, please, I will serve faithfully. I, you are Nothic's master. I help. I help. Dogobo is going to crush its head with his boot. With his, did you say boot or boat? Boot. Because you don't have a boat. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> I'll go wait. We might be able to use him. It's a little late. <laughs> All right. So you squish the last Nothic's head. You look around the chamber, and you see that this room you're in. It's very strange. Very strange indeed. Uh, this room has amber glazed walls and a floor of purplish black marble. There are two amber sarcophagi standing in alcoves to the west and to the east. You can see that the remnant, the remains of a, a third sarcophagus that probably once stood in the northern alcove lies shattered on the floor. And uh, that is all for now. What would you like to do? Are there any like obvious lid openings on the sarcophagus? Yes, yes. Uh, you can see um, like a handle, a uh, handle, a handle carved into the side. Even though these these uh, sarcophaguses are, they're they're not like very uh, evenly cut. You know, they're kind of rough and jagged. You can definitely see that there is a lid, and through the opaque amber lid, there's something in there. You just can't quite clearly make out what it is. 
but other than like the opaqueness, are they? There's no like engraving that says what was buried here or whatnot. No, sir. There's no markings of any kind. I'm going to try and open one. Okay. Um, as he lays his hands on the lid, um, you see his body tenses up. His his head arches back and looks towards the sky, and his eyes roll up, exposing the whites. Come here, you. We're going on an adventure. Okay. Um, as you lay your hands on this sarcophagus, um, let me make sure I have the right notes here. Okay. Um, you, you feel a voice permeating your mind and, and it whispers to you. And as, uh, you, and as it speaks, you feel this icy cold kind of seeping all around you. Your vision is clouded by blackness, and it begins to whisper. Seeker, why have you come to this temple? We are looking for a way to destroy Strahd and get ourselves back home. Ah, it is power that you seek, eh? If it is power yeah, that you yearn for, I can help. How so? Accept my gift. I will give you the, the command of the elements at your fingertips. You will unleash my wrath on any you deem necessary. Simply say yes. Yes. Excellent. And uh, as you you say this in your mind, right, and you 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 agree, um, you feel ice um, coming up into your brain, and everything goes dark once more. Okay. So as you guys are standing here watching him, uh, eventually you can see the ground around his feet. Um, begins to frost over with cold. Uh, th this icy uh, 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 frost layer begins to race up his legs and, and kind of envelopes him for a moment before it seems to be absorbed into his body. After this display, uh, Thorin lets go of the sarcophagus and steps back. What happened? So, 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 something is in there. It, I think it wants to uh, help us destroy Strahd. And then I'm going to turn and just walk out the room. I'm going to insight that. Oh, I believe him. Okay. Don't okay. go. I'm going to say Dog Woggle believes him anyway, but he doesn't care. Dog Woggle is angry enough to be able to take Strahd on solo right now, so he just stalks out the room looking for the next thing to smash. Okay. One sec. Um, get, uh, Dark, I added that to your sheet. You can read it. And then uh, what was everybody else saying? Out of blind here, I'm going to look at the other sarcophagus. Hmm. Is it like relatively the same? It it, it looks the same, yeah. Hmm. 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 Okay, you know what? I'll burn a spell slot for this. I'll cast protection against good and evil. On okay. And then <laughs> I'll touch the sarcophagus. Okay. 
touching the sarcophagus on the western wall, uh, two things happen. One, your protection from good and evil is instantly canceled. Just oh, poof. Wow. You feel the energy leaving you. Uh, and most of the party is leaving the room, but you hear a slight... <laughs> And when you look around, you see Galahan touching the other sarcophagus as his body is in a similar state of seizure. And then you come down here. We're going on an adventure. Hello. So as you stand here with your hands on the sarcophagus, uh, your vision goes black. And, and you are surrounded with... Uh, 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 you can f almost feel... Like like spidery fingers crawling over your mind, pilfering through your memories. You hear a, a deep, sultry voice. Tell me, Seeker, why have you come to this temple? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can um... hear you. So what? So I see nothing but like inky blackness around me. I take it. Yes. So I open my eyes and there's nothing. Okay. Galahan will address the voice and say, "I seek to destroy Strahd, for he has taken much from. He has killed my mentor, and tortured me for no how for who knows how long, in an effort to break my vows." Destroy Strahd, you say. Well, the most powerful weapon in any crusade is knowledge. I am the star of secrets, the giver of lost and arcane secrets. Accept my gift, and I will show you what you seek. Very well, then. <laughs> I accept. All right. Um, before we go back to the other channel, I need you to make a wisdom save. That is a fail. So uh, I'm going to alter your sheet. I'm telling you now before they can hear. Um, you're going to gain a new power. You're also going to gain a new flaw. And because you failed... Your wisdom save, um, accepting the dark god's gift is going to pervert your personality. Uh, you were lawful good before, yes? Chaotic good. Chaotic, chaotic good. good. Well, now you are chaotic evil. Ooh, yes! <laughs> oh, the breaking has occurred! So, um, and, and your new flaw... Your your voice, uh, you tend to speak in a low whisper when you interact with others. And you often smile, and, and your smile is cruel and evil. So you can roleplay that however you would like, and then I will, oh, I will edit good. your power onto your sheet. And let's go back up. Uh, one sec. Oh, wait, are we up here? Yes, we are! Shh, shh. Oh, I just... Darn it. Oh, I had a question. Pratt. You can whisper, er, here, 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 here. Okay, secret question time. Uh, so, I lose my paladin powers, right? No, no. Oh, okay. Because so you're, I, you're, oh, what, oath? Devotion. You can still, uh, be devoted and selfish. <laughs> Remember, 5e, your paladin o powers are sworn to your conviction, not, not service to a god. Oh, because, like, I think the, the tenants are different, but... Um, it's okay. You'll be fine. Okay, You'll be fine. <laughs> Alright, this is great. Thank you. All okay. Right. So, moving out of the room, uh, Del Wobble's going to move towards the door to the west and put the boot to it. One second. Okay. I swear, if he just deleted everything I just did. Yeah. 
Okay. So you are trying to open that door now, yeah? Uh, again. Wait. Maybe not? 33. Yeah. Uh, yes. Trying to open the door, you find it uh, shut fast in front of you. You can try right, to force the uh, door open if you'd like, but it's going to take another athletics check. Sure. Uh, Dog Rogger will try and force the door. Assist. Okay, advantage. Hey! So, struggling against it, you are able to pull the door forward. As you do, you can see golden bands of arcane sigils uh, reveal themselves and then shatter under your strength. Uh, you wrestle the door open and reveal a room with amber glazed walls, a black marble floor with red veins, and three amber sarcophagi standing in alcoves. All right, Dog Orville's going to move into the room, see if you can see anything to attack. Uh, as you walk in, I'm sorry, but um, you are going to take 17 damage. Okay, I'm going to Stones Endurance that. that, that, that okay, fine, fine, fine. And then everybody roll initiative, because as you walk into the room, you see that there was a creature. Oh, man, is that on the... You see that there was a creature that was uh, hidden inside the chamber, invisible until you enter. And then as you walk okay. in, it slashed and cut you with its claws. So, if it was a surprise thing, um, I can immediately rage and I get to act on surprise time. You're not surprised. It just okay. attacked you. You still roll initiative and act as normal. No problem. Um, trying to find... Here it is. And in case anybody was curious, that's what it looks like. Elder Oblix. That sounds great. You'll be fine. Be fine. Fills me with confidence. Oh, yes. Everyone in the tracker? One, two, three, four, five. Ha! Ah, Narl King still is first. Okay, so, um, quick question. Uh, I, as a player, know what these things are, but would, uh, would the character know, or do I have to roll something? Hmm. Well... You're, you're guys from the Feywild, right? So chances are he wouldn't have any experience with Limbo or the Abyss. But I'll tell you what, you can make a history check and see if maybe you've learned about them at some point. Uh, sure. Yeah, so you're, you're familiar with them. You, you know what they're called? And you know that they pose a great level of danger. Okay. All right. In which case, I'm going to attack it like no tomorrow. Uh, miss, and then a hit is on the second attack. Oh God, why? Ice cold lightning thunder. Okay, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty-one. Wait, don't you add an additional one d eight because you crit with dread ambusher? Yeah, you double all dice. Oh, so just click dread ambusher again. And that's my turn. Okay. So this creature, standing here, you see it smiles as it just eats the hits from the Narl King. And then it is going to cast this. 
Uh, I know that doesn't tell you a whole lot, but I will give you the spell description here in a second. I just am putting the uh, the area out. What is the area? Is it 30 radius? 28 radius. Okay. Uh, na na na. Na na na. Yellow. Circle. 20 foot radius. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay, so there's the radius there, and so it casts it, and it does move around corners, and it just kind of pushes all the way out into the hall. And cloud kill, uh, poisonous yellow fog, uh, it spreads around blah blah blah. Da, 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 the creature enters a spell area for the first time on a turn, which you are entering its area for the first time. You make a con save. Or you take uh, the poison damage listed there, half as much on a save. Um, you are affected even if you hold your breath as it permeates through your pores and, and orifices. It still affects you. And uh, the fog will slowly drift away from its source at 10 feet at, at, per round. And uh, you repeat the save if you start your turn within the area. So right now, everybody, it would be Dog Woggle, Ear Toast, um, Galahan and Thorin are inside the cloud kill. You need to make a con save. And it looks like Galahan saves, Erto saves, Dogwoggle does not, Thorin is Thorin in range of your. Well, it doesn't matter, you're over five. So those of you that saved, you're taking 16. Those of you that did it, eat 32. And this is poison damage if you're resistant or anything. Oh, and actually, let me check one more time. Uh, the area is heavily obscured. All right, Galahan. Yeah, start of your turn. Wait, yeah, start of your turn. Con save. <laughs> That's uh thirty-two poison, Chief. That downs me. And I guess that's my turn. Dogwoggle, start of your turn. Con save. Yep. Well, you're you you did say you were ra oh you haven't had a turn yet. I haven't had a turn yet, so no. Good night. <laughs> Lauren, start of your turn. This cloud cloud kill is start of your turn, right? Ender spells starts its turn there. That's a save. Right, so so uh, that is 12. Half, half of yep. his... No, 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 no. 16. All right. 16, and then I'm also resistant, so 8. There you go. And then what? All right, so heavily obscured, so I can't see anything across the room, essentially. That's right. Right? Yeah, uh, Any when you're inside a heavily obscured area, you are blind. Got it. All right, I'm going to back away from the wall, then. Or back away up to the wall. And let's see. Travels. Would I have heard any of my comrades going down? Uh, yeah. You you heard uh, a sound of uh, like armor, like heavy plate or or chain, like landing and, and crashing to the floor. You also heard a very large meaty thunk, uh, as what could only be dogwoggle fell to the ground. 
Okay, I'm going to relay this to the neural game. Like, I, I believe that our comrades are falling due to this fog. Um, I think what to do here. There's much I can do. Huh. Um, I know, I know. I, I'm waiting for Dog Woggle. Judd, Judd is currently out of the game, so that doesn't really matter. But I know, I know about Dog Woggle. I want to attempt to use dispel magic at level four on the area. Okay. Um, give me one second. Ooh, that was close. Good guess, though. Right. Okay. Um, so you at level four make an ability check using your spell. Okay, plus ten plus the spells level. Um higher on the target. So okay. Uh in the spells effect is equal to or less than. So it doesn't automatically end. You are going to have to make a roll. Alright, so sorry, does a regular D twenty then? Yeah, uh, it's yeah. Your, it's your well, no, it's your casting. plus your spell casting mod. So, so yeah, you could just roll a uh, uh, a D twenty and then add the modifiers after. And the DC is fifteen. Okay. I think it's a four on it. <laughs> okay. Let me just dispel this ninth level spell effect real quick. Fifth? We literally just said it was fifth level. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. The plus one mod. Oh, it doesn't matter, dude. It's a net twenty. You you got it. <laughs> so okay. you you throw your hands out and and you see the fog just kind of falls to the ground and disappears. Uh, Irtos. Move to here. Pounce. Hit. Hit. Uh, because the second claw hit, do I need to make a... DC 12. Okay, let me... A DC me... 12 strength. Okay, so he goes down, which means your bite would have advantage, and then there you go. All right, so 21 currently, and then your fourth attack because he fell? Yes. Is that what the second bite is? Yes, the second bite is the one that I get because okay, he went okay, okay. So 10, 19, 21, that's what I said, okay. It just already counted it. Okay, finished. Yes. Narrow King. Okay, I was going to save this for the elf dude, but this thing has to go down now. So I'm going to bring out my oath bow, saying Sylvan Swift Death to you who have wronged me, and fire to her. Remember, you have advantage when you swear your oath. Go ahead and, and re-roll, because you have to use the bow. Because it's got the... with advantage. Sorry, hold on. So, okay, there's one attack, 
and then just toggle advantage and attack with the second. There we go. So 18. Oh god, 27, 37. All right, solid round of hits. Okay, and uh, that's it for me. Out of there, CG. Okay, uh, now it's his turn. He is simply going to uh, bring, he, he, like, he's got his hands down at his side. He raises them up, and as he does, you can see flames kind of burst from the ground and follow his hands. He rears back like he's going to throw something and throws out into the hallway. Kaboom! Uh, it will affect... Yeah, just these three here. So, sorry, Galahan, that's going to be a uh, fail death save for you. The other two, uh, you're going to have to roll for the save there. Uh, Naro King fails and takes 18. And Thorin also fails, but you're resistant to fire, so take 9. Guess I should remove that bless, huh? That's been gone for like ever. <laughs> Galahan, you're up next. One success, one fail. Uh, two fails. Meat grind mode. Oh, we're in a meat grinder mode? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dogwoggle. Uh, Dogwoggle, you actually have a nat 20 hanging. So oh, really? So... I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pop that there, and you will regain one hit point and stand up at the start of your turn. Excellent. Then, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll stand up. Uh, bonus action rage. Let's see if we can do something to, something to this thing. I'm gonna move around it to try and focus its attacks more towards us and less towards the, the rest of the party. Um yeah, great out. I'm already I'm already really hurt, so you know, there's no harm in going reckless. May as well. Hit and hit. Or yep. And that's my turn. Oh, wait, I just subtracted it from the slot instead of from you. Wait, that's what I'm supposed to do. What am I talking about? <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Thorin. So when when the fireball exploded out here, I assume residual fires around. I guess. All right, in that case, Thorin is going to be taking off down the hall pretty much screaming and all the while trying to cast <laughs> mass healing word on the party and continue. Uh, is mass healing word people you can see? Yeah, yeah, to be able to see it. Up to six creatures that you can see. So yeah, so that uh is yeah. gonna be Galahan, Thorin, Narl King healing for eight. Well, it depends on where he casts it, because if you cast it here, he, he said he was gonna it. run and scream first and then cast oh, okay. it. <laughs> that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> Are you finished? Uh you still have an action, I suppose. Yeah, I'm actually going to use uh, Cure Wounds on myself. Um, Two double spells. I can't do that. Yep, never mind. Um, I'll just put these no, here for reference. pretty much from here. I, I've got nothing. <laughs> Leftover from the fireball. Uh, ear toes. Yeah. 
moved out here to see what the cleric is screaming about. <laughs> Using my last rage and. Uh, miss, miss. Miss again. Well, I'm done. Narrow King. Okay, two more shots with the oath bow. There you go. Sorry about that. All right, uh, that's a hit, obviously, yeah. Oh boy, 20, 24, 6, 0, Uh, yeah, he's dead. You win again, Math! All right, after that, Narl King walks into the room and sort of rubs by going... Oh boy, what a trophy. Alright, what's everybody else doing? Getting up. Galahan walks in the room as well. Back in a way. Busies himself uh, cutting off the creature's claws and skin, head and everything, just turning them into a big pile of cubes. Fascinating. Galahad walks over to watch you. Uh, does it look like the slot has uh, anything worth taking? Um. Three, three. Nope. Nope. The only things that are in this chamber are the three sarcophagi. Hmm. Galahad strokes his chin. And uh, walks up to this one and touches. Nothing happens. Unfortunate. He'll do the same thing to the other two. Same. Nothing happens. No, I just, no, this I just worthless. fudged it. Oh, it is worthless. Get combat over uh, with. Let us continue. Yeah. Once I'm finished uh, collecting my trophies, I follow them. Hmm. Dog Woggle, you're not going to open this door? Wait, uh, is the uh, isn't the, yeah, I'm going to say I, I, I bust open all these doors, I think. No. Oh, no, yeah, the other doors are, they're not, yeah. All right. Right, right. Let me catch my breath, and then we'll continue on. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit here for a minute. And Dog Wogel sits down. So uh, he's gonna take. Th Sorry, go ahead. So th Thorn's going to. Pretty much say the part if we can rest here for about ten or so minutes, I can try to heal us. Sure, yeah, I think you have ten minutes. Yeah, uh, Dog Wogel gives you a thumbs up. Nobody wants to touch any of those. That's pretty much towards the entire party within range. Oh, 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 oh. So, uh, yeah, Dog Ogle's going to take out some of his, uh, some of the rock meat that he has left and start eating it. Oh, 
I'm gonna come dig my claws into the fire, see if there's anything edible in there. Uh, Dog Wogle stands up and shouts, Dog Wogle is no child! <laughs> Are you ready, Dog Woggle? Dog Woggle starts, uh, starts moving off back up the corridor. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> what are you trying to do over here? Uh, you hear Dog Woggle shouting from inside the room. Dog Woggle is the greatest and mightiest. There are none mightier than the Atlas tribe. I think he's finally gone insane. Does he do this often? Uh, Dog Woggle will... We'll move up, <laughs> and we'll try and throw the lid off the top of the sarcophagus. Sorry, did I cut out? No, you did not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dog Woggle. <laughs> Yes. As you lay your hands on the sarcophagus, um, you find yourself standing uh, in it on top of a battlefield. As far as the eye can see, you see corpses strewn in every direction. Uh, the, 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 the ground, the scenery, the very trees and sky are stained red with blood. And as you look down, you can see in your hand is a battle axe and, and you also are covered from head to toe okay um did you say did you say i'm still sort of in like the, the midst of a battle or the aftermath the aftermath you okay. are alone as you stand here you hear a voice powerful and commanding Dogwoggle, greatest son of the Atlas tribe, why have you come to this temple? The small folk need a shiny golden sword to kill some wimpy vampire by the name of Strahd. Ah, Dogwoggle needs no such trinket. You need no such trinket! It echoes you as you speak. Yep, uh, Dog Woggle's, yes! Dog Woggle is mighty enough to crush him himself! Yes! Yes! The Atlas, you are a, a walking weapon! A warrior unlike seen before! Yep, kind of, kind of getting hyped off the, the, the voice bouncing off him, he just kind of screams his rage to the sky. Uh, as you scream, it echoes with you. The, its voice and yours melding and becoming one. Will you let me walk with you, warrior? Will you take my gift and slay all who would dare stand against you? <clears throat> walk with me. Bear witness to my greatness. Yes, witness we'll it. We'll laugh together at the weaklings as we crush Strahd. All are weak under our might. <laughs> Just say yes. Yes! <laughs> uh, dog Woggle. Um, as you stand here, you see, and I'm going to use this, this, uh, uh, this an analogy, but there are these black tendrils of this, this brackish ooze that begin to climb up your body, seeping in and melding with your skin. Uh, it is 
almost akin to say the venom as he overcomes Eddie Brock. If that that should uh, make sense to everybody. Uh, yeah, as you so yeah. as you stand there, this thing envelopes you, covers you completely, and it melds with your skin. Um, as it does, oily black fur sprouts over every centimeter of your body. And I need you to make a wisdom save. Okay. <laughs> there it is. What is your alignment, Dogwoggle? Uh, chaotic neutral. Now you are chaotic evil. <laughs> it is a... <laughs> It is a permanent change <laughs> and right. uh, accepting the dark gift of Yogg the Invincible uh, has made your, your maximum hit points increase by 30 permanently. Holy crap. Yes, holy crap. Well, there's a reason why he's called Yogg the Invincible. Uh, yeah. And also, I did mention the fur thing, right? <laughs> you did mention the fur thing, All right, yes. so you, now you're a big, hairy beast, and you're angry and evil, and that'll be fun. Now let's go back to the rest of the group. Sure. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello. So, uh, as you guys are standing here, you hear Dogwoggle let out the, the scream of terror and pain. Well, that sounds unfortunate. Yes, yes, go check that out. Are you not coming? I will follow. Just, just go. But I do not want to leave you alone, friend. Come. Wait, where are you going? Uh, Irtos, as, as you and, and the Gnarl King enter the chamber where Dogwoggle stands... You see that his chest is heaving as he regains his breath. <sighs> and as he stands here before you, uh, his, his body is now covered head to toe in, the, in this coarse black hair. And there seems to be um, steam coming off of his body as if some great energy has been expended uh, through this transformation. Gnarl King kind of lets out an anxious uh, growl. We cannot get too far away from each other. So, shall we go? Gnarl <laughs> King nods. Gah! I'm attacking Galahan at this point. What? Wait, what? He will. Why he won't stop chasing you with this fire. <laughs> chasing you with fire? What? <laughs> I think I missed something. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm gonna. I, I will totally allow you to do this. Uh, but you ha but as he turns around, he's like, get in the fire away from me! And then he l lets loose this cone of cold. Uh, Galahan, make a con save. I did, I did. Okay, uh, you pass, so you're only, only taking 24. And then... Uh, <laughs> So you see, like, the torch Galahan just, like, go out be like, ah! Yeah, and uh, so those of you exiting Dogwoggle's chamber, you walk out and you and that's what you see. Just Thorin just turn around and blast Galahan into oblivion. <laughs> uh, the Gnarl King simply walks forward and makes a you know, uh, a couple of guttural sounding words that, um... I gotta imagine the Gnarl King and Irtos have to be very worried about what's happening now. It looks like he's demanding an explanation. Thorne just looks back and is like, 
would not stop chasing me with the freaking torch. And backs away. Well, I think the torch is out now. I'm fair. <laughs> the torch is out now. So what now? I rolled death saves. Uh, if no one's picking you up, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Dog Orville, ah! stands, Dog Orville stands next to you. Stop it! Stop it! What are you doing? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> First table is zero. Why? Why would you just... <laughs> just just YOLO six death saves in a row? <laughs> that was risky business. <laughs> Especially not giving the rest of us time to do anything between said death save. <laughs> <laughs> dog Ogle does nothing but stand over and watch him. Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, guys, we're on meat grinder mode. He's dead. That means there's only one pass there. Two passes in that list. Oh, rip. Are you sure you don't want to give your, your teammates an opportunity to react? Sure, I'll, I'll give him one. But if it fails, I'm just going to take the death. Because it's too late now, right? Because I, uh, I already rolled the roll. But if you guys want to... Isn't 15 a pass? Yeah, which means he has two passes and four fails. Oh, I thought that con save was a... No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, There's if there. if yeah, if we count the eleven, fail, he's dead. Fail, pass, pass. Okay, would you like to do something, Irtos? That doesn't sound like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he broke his wild shape. Use the staff. Heal everyone for 14. Get out of here. So everybody heals oh, for 14. Net, I was only trying to make sure you were safe. I can't protect you if I can't see you. I don't need your protection. Just stay away. Uh, Galahan, you look up at Dog Robo and... You see, you see the description that was that was shown before that he's covered head to toe in this thick black fur. Uh, he looks disappointed, what, and he walks off. What happened to Dog Woggle? I'm going to ask as uh, he walks. We don't know. We were in the process of trying to find out when you and Thorin started going at at each other. Uh, rip. Thor, Thor, calm down. It was completely unnecessary. It's only a toy. Looks like, uh... You... Looks like the Narl King wants to go up these stairs here. Speaking of which, I also need to light another one. Because I can't see shit. So I light another torch. So... Why don't we, uh... Why don't we take a breather? Get our bearings and we'll move on. Well? Sure. I feel a little chilly right now. I feel perfectly fine. I feel a little chilly right now. Uh, I kind of see like a, a chair here, so Dog Ogle's just going to move over and sit in it. <laughs> Next to the pool of jelly on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, you, are you guys trying to take a short? Yeah, just a short rest. Yeah, I think a short. So I'm going to ask Dog Ogle who's the ticket. 
try to take a short rest here. What happened? You're covered in fur. The uh, spirit of the bear is manifested within me. And I will prove my might to everyone. Interesting. <laughs> I'm going to walk up to Galahan, take his torch, and put it up. I can't see anything without light. Place a hand on him. <laughs> uh, are we just going to hold hands the whole It lasts for eight hours. Oh, never mind. That's what you're doing. Got it. I, uh, thank Alright, uh, if you guys are going to take a short rest, you can go ahead and roll hit dice. Where does 21 lead? No, it's, I need upper floor. I'm at zero hit. X eighteen. Right there. Yeah, I thought the Ah. Okay. Nope, they never did find the secret door there. Alright. Um everybody rest it up. Yep. Cool. Then let us move on. Dog Woggle, do you remember what I said about not eating the lizard? Like, you yeah. have to realize that mayhap we need to uh, survive. So, here. And I, uh, I take some of the roast lizard leg and I toss it to Dog Woggle. Dog Woggle catches it and chews it, like munches on it as he heads upstairs. All right, uh, if you guys want to go up the stairs, you got to quit moving so I can grab your tokens. Galahad will also, like, take one of the legs for himself and eat it. It uh, tastes better. Little gamey, you're right. Two, three, four. Let me make sure they don't have tokens here on this map. Son of a bitch. Okay. Oh no. You guys find yourself in a narrow stairwell right here. You want to do the honors, dog woggle? Or I point at. Yeah, why not? Prove your fight to whoever may be on the other side. Make sure it's equally dramatic, too. Dog woggle will kind of turn and glare at him a little bit and then open the door. It's not locked. Or more accurately, it locks from this side. So you're able to just kind of flip it and flip this, the, the locking mechanism and open the door. And when you do, be a hallway. <sighs> oh, this is obnoxiously familiar. Hey, let's we found a way out. Well, do you think that lich will notice us if we... Aren't we supposed to get a sword or something other? Right, 
Do you really want to take the chance of leaving without whatever it is we're supposed to get? Hey. So back down the depths we go. Wait, is that... Is that nerd still there? Perhaps. <laughs> Do I want to torture him with the lich right now? Or Maybe no? he knows where to find your toy. Or Galahan does, because he can cast Strike. That's why? No. So we are looking for the Lich, right? No, not the Lich. The, the nerd, the preachy one. <laughs> the preachy oh. one? Yes, that oh. one. Wait, wait. Didn't you? You already asked, uh... Was no, but the Narl King did. He asked him if uh, he asked him for everything that he knew and if he knew where the sword was, and he said no. Okay, so if the Narl King uh, beckons everyone to follow him back down the stairs. So, so we are going down the stairs. But we can. Find out where the sword is from the nerdy man. If he lives here, he might know where it is. Um, the Neural King just shakes his head at uh, Dog Woggle and says, He did not know. Well, may maybe he was lying to you. We should extract as much information as possible, yes? I am in agreement with Dog Woggle here. Mayhap we can be a bit more forceful in our attempts this time. He didn't seem very congenial to normal conversation anyway. No. Too risky. I see no little risk. Not about risk. Are you sure he doesn't know? Positive. Uh, Doggo will, will nod and turn and follow Narl King back downstairs. Very well then. So back downstairs. There's a door over here. Wasn't this the sealed one? Well, most of them are sealed. Dogwoggle. I think I you think are. Dogwoggle moving the eyes to open the door. Why is he not using his scrying? There you go. Dogwoggle will attempt to open the door. Okay. You know the routine. It's shut, sealed uh, in front of you. Okay. Oh, we don't have disadvantage this time, though. Ugh. Let's fail. As you try to wrest the door open, you see those glowing arcane runes holding the door shut. Hmm. Once more. Oh, straining your muscles a second time, uh, you still are unable to open the door. Fine. There was another larger hallway we could go through. Why has nobody tried casting Dispel Magic yet? Can we see the runes, or just when he's trying to open it? Yes, it's only when he's trying to force open the door that these magic sigils are making themselves apparent. Otherwise, they are invisible. I mean, why not? I'm just going to go on a limb here. Uh, I know you fail. What was the word that we got? Danto... Mm. Daha... I can't say this word. Da... Mm. Dahav... Da Dahaviton? Dahaviton? Nothing happens. Darn it. How about the other one? 
what is it? Fan Fangor? Fangor? As you say that word, you see the sigils uh, light up brightly, and then you hear a faint breaking sound, and the door opens in front of you. Mm. In retrospect, it was sort of obvious. <laughs> well, I pushed the door open. Are you open? You see ahead of you. Nope, oh, wrong one. Three amber sarcophagi. In a room of grayish marble that seems to have black veins running throughout. Now this is an interesting room. I walk up to one of the uh, sarcophagi and try to lift the, the lid off. It doesn't respond to your touch. Hmm. Well. Anyone else want to give it a shot? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll do it. What is try, it? Try, try to open it. Alrighty. Well, uh, same as before. He t he lays his hands upon the the top of the sarcophagus. His body goes rigid, and he seems to be having some sort of a seizure as his eyes roll up into his head. Hey, buddy. Hello. So you stand here, and, and in the instant you place your hands on the sarcophagus, um, the world catches on fire. As you look around everywhere, it is reddish and orange flames that lick around you in every, every square inch that you can see. You can hear people screaming in agony, and standing in front of you is a vestige of a giant... A, a, a giant fiend. He, his skin is red. He's got massive black horns and leathery wings protrude from his back. He is easily twenty feet tall, and he he stoops down to look at you. What is this that stands before me? Eratos, that's what stands before you. And tell me, Seeker, why have you come to this temple? Because I've seen visions of a great fog rolling over the land, bringing nothing but death and destruction. I have come to learn that that fog is brought about by Strahd. Therefore, Strahd needs to die. That is all that you seek? To kill your enemy? Well, nature will be a whole lot better without him in there. He, he kind of stands up, and, and as he does, he breathes in deeply. Well, I can be of use to you. And you shall service me as well. Accept my gift. I will lend you my power so that you can defeat those who wrong you. And as he does, he kind of extends his massive hand as if he, he expects you to shake it. Yeah, I'll reach out and shake it. <laughs> None of them! Not one is like, this seems like a bad idea. Okay. So, uh, as you do, you feel your skin catch a flame. And uh, I need you to make a wisdom save. That is a pass. You accept his dark gift, but manage to maintain your sanity while you do. However, uh, wielding such a dark power does come at a price. Um, your new power, you are able to summon and control hellhounds. 
Um, you can have two hounds summoned at a time. They appear at the same time when you choose to beckon them to your side. Uh, however, you can only summon them once, and when they die, they are gone forever. Even right. after the hounds are gone, um, even after the hounds are gone, um, you retain the flaws incurred. Um, you gain the ability to speak and understand Infernal, and uh, the Hellhounds know no other language than Infernal. And as you, uh, when as a permanent effect, um, sulfurous smoke constantly rises from your body. It is an offensive smell, and it gives you disadvantage on charisma checks when you try to interact with others. Oop. Uh, that is... Charisma of nine. Fair enough, I guess. Okay, but there's that. Let's go back to the main channel. All right. As uh, you guys... Oh, no. It looks like they left you. <laughs> well, as Eertos rejoins the party, you can see that there are trails of smoke constantly emanating from his hide, and he smells awful. Like rotten boiled eggs. Oh, by the god. Oh, I don't think gods had anything to do with this. Uh huh. You know what? Was the sword in there? No, it wasn't. Well, I guess we keep looking. We can go to the other side, say that other word to the other door. Maybe it's behind that. Oh, no. That story, I'm like, passes, catches up with Gnarl King. I'm going to let him know that your toast really stinks. We should move fast. Uh, Narl King points to the set of doors uh, below him on the map. All right, Daddy, I'm going to look at this door, and I'm going to say, uh, oh my god, this word, uh, Dahaviton. Um, which door? Where are you? Oh, uh, can nothing happens. I think. Can can you see my ping? Yeah, no, I see you. I just have to get to that section of my notes. Uh nope. The door does not open. Hmm. Maybe it's not sealed. I'll try to open. It's athletics. Oh, it's still sealed? Oh, okay. Uh Narrow King, stop right there, please. Narl King, as you move forward, where the fuck is there? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading the entirely wrong section. You're good. <laughs> I cast this on the door in front of me. Hmm, that is suspicious. <laughs> okay, um, you can see that there are two runes etched onto the walls to the left and to the right of the door. There are two separate traps that um, are are flanking either side into this chamber. Uh. 
Uh, does the spell tell me anything about what the traps do? Uh, no. It senses that they are there. Doesn't mean that you understand what it does. Okay, in which case I look to the rest of the party and point at the two roots and say, Trap. Uh, as far as the general nature, uh, you understand that they are, are magical uh, wards and that they're probably going to hurt you very badly. <laughs> All right, at this point, I'll say uh, the two words earlier. There's no response. Darn it. Maybe get closer. Say it to the door. It'll probably disarm the trap. All right, I get closer. It, it doesn't. I... <laughs> no, no. Del Rogo's chuckling to himself, looking on expectantly. Try opening the door. Maybe it worked. <laughs> Somehow, I doubt nothing seemed to happen. Hmm. Well, nerd magics. You can't see no magics. See? You're not a nerd magic user thing. So maybe you just couldn't see it do it. Try the door. I think this one I'm going to pass off. Why, you scared little man? Someone, uh, someone else of more arcane knowledge <laughs> should probably give it a... I love you. Zach Fidakis, thank you for the resub, brother. And appreciate you. Words. Um, Carol King, best perception 19 guy. You notice that um, unlike the other doors that seem to have magic glyphs on the actual door, these ones have magic glyphs on the walls next to the door. And that there are conspicuously absent uh, arcane locks holding the door shut. Um, all right, so I'm thinking to myself that the doors might open, but that it would probably activate the runes, which would probably do something nasty to us. Uh, you. He looks over at Thorin. Can't you make the magic go away? I could, but... Then do it. Unless you'd rather stay here. I did. That's well, why it's hidden right now. We already found right the now. stairways out of here. But that's... I thought you want the shiny stick thing, thing to... The sword to to kill Strahd. It's not anywhere here. Thorne's going to get fed up and just actually go to like open the door. Just gonna okay. The door is door. locked. Physically locked. Uh, you would see that uh, as Thorin tries to, um, like, as, as his hand reaches to open the door, uh, Dog Ogle is going to shove uh, Galahad forward. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so I guess shove forward and Galahad just goes like, what is it? Go help him. Hmm. Can I see the lock? No. It's on the inside. Right? Hmm. All right, I'll walk up to the... I'll walk up to the door. And, um... Eh, why not? I will attempt to force... There's no way this is gonna work. All right. Athletics DM? Or daddy? <laughs> uh, yeah. 
yeah, there, there's no way. <laughs> okay, uh, you pull on it, right? And the door, it moves. Like, it's not sturdy like the other ones. You could probably break it. Well. <laughs> I think, uh, someone should assist me with this. <laughs> and I could probably push it or pull it open. <laughs> they know the trap like, is there. Go for it. Uh, dog will will, will glare at the uh, at the person who said that, and he's just gonna try and charge forward and try and barrel through the door. Just try and bust through to the other side. I move backward. As no, 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 no. You stop. Make your uh, athletics check there, guy. Or your weapons attack, or whatever you do. Okay, yep. So he he runs into the door. Bang! The, the amber doors shatter. And as they do... As they do, everything in that radius, those runes to either side of the door, light up with a blackish energy. And it and it comes barreling out in a wave that is almost uh, fifteen feet wide. That is unfortunate. And uh, do 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 do. Oh, yeah, no save. Holy shit! I mean, <clears throat> you'll be all right. That is not correct. What what the heck is there between the D and the 10? Anyway, oh, see, that was fine. So, you three take 19 necrotic damage. All right, I'm going to Stone's Endurance that. Yes. It's a good thing you guys just rested. Because the second component to that trap... <laughs> <laughs> did you no, that I did that just knock wrong. you out <laughs> no it didn't i did the math wrong i had 39 or 38 it's 19 right yeah are you i'm good don't worry Yeah, yeah. I see you rolled like six hit dice. Okay, it's legit. <laughs> Gave me a heart attack. Okay, but the door is open! Yep, Dark Ogre just smashes his way through to the other side. Okay, uh, inside this chamber... Let me get you the description. 31. 31... 31. There we go. Um, you smell the horrid perfume of the ancient dead. St there are stone niches along the walls of these catacombs that hold human-shaped amber husks, bones, and tattered shrouds. As you enter, tall iron candlesticks that stand in alcoves ignite, uh, casting flickering light along the walls and causing the shattered amber to glisten. All right. As you enter and look in the alcoves where all these corpses are and the remnant remains are, you see various things also occupying the alcoves. Small necklaces with little charms, shields with symbols painted on the front, uh, some shattered weaponry that, that sits uh, in, in nearby. All right, if Dog Ogle doesn't see what looks like a gold sword, he ignores it. Uh, same with the Naro King. He's just here to get the sword and get out. You do see swords. There are several of them in the chambers. Yep, but he's going specific to for gold. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, uh, Dark. 
Thorne's going to take time inspecting each alcove. Yeah. Uh, well, Thorin and Galahan specifically, when you start walking around, you recognize these objects for what they are. The necklaces, the shields, these are holy objects. Each of these corpses is some paladin or cleric that Strahd has killed and decimated. And he's interred the remains here as a monument to the triumph of, of darkness over light. Mm, wait. I'm going to look for a very specific corpse. Uh, well, if you don't tell me what that specifically is, I don't uh, know how to answer. Very, I'm going to look for uh, Malos. Uh, my... You find it. It, it, you you see that he is interred here on the western wall. Hmm. His bones have been broken and shattered, and there's very little actual remains there. Hmm. Was like his net, like his holy symbol, and like his stuff still there, or is it just? Yes. Uh. Also broken in two. Uh. So. Irtos and Narl King, as you head into the chamber to the east, you see that most of the niches here are, lie empty, except for a thick coat of dust. However, you see one niche has a placard in front of it. <coughs> and, and what does it say? On this placard, written in a stylized common, Space Reserved. Galahan. Uh, Dog will go see something to the west. Something that looks shiny and gold. Hey, something here. As you uh, head into the western catacombs, you see more skeletal remains filled niches in the walls, and their amber husks that once preserved them smashed beyond repair. At the far end of the chamber is a, a golden sarcophagus, almost identical to the one that you found Galahan in. All right. Um, Dogwell is going to see if he can open it. You can. You can. And very much just like Galahan's uh, sarcophagus. Um, the, the thing opens, and inside you see a very large, very muscular, black-furred tabaxi. It's obvious that Strahd has interred here an, another enemy of his that he has played with and tortured over the aeons. Hmm. And as the, the, the sarcophagus opens, he blinks his eyes and begins to stir. Huh? Huh? So this is what it looked like when you all found me. <laughs> Pretty much. The cat immediately hops up. And assumes a stance. Who? Who? Who are you? Who are you? No. I asked you first. Fine. I am the one that will cleave you in two if you don't tell me who you are. And I start brandishing this large axe at my side. Now, now. And like, tut, tut, tut. And, um, at Dog Wall. We, uh, we seek to destroy Straw. Who are you? My name is Mark of Claw. Call me what you wish. But where am I? In Strahd's torture chambers. 
Hey, look, a new sheet. Well, I'll be on my way. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna let this happen. Dog Rogo moves, moves and stands in his way. What is your relationship to Strahd? Uh, I don't like the guy. <laughs> I don't like the guy. Do you want to help us kill him? Sure. I'm just, I, I need to get out of this place. Wait, do you know of a, of a gold sword? Do, do I know of a gold sword? Actually, during your time interred here, you have seen, uh, through various beatings and torture, you know, sessions, uh, just across from where they have kept you, it's the treasure vault. Yeah, I've seen a sword. Not just any. A yellow one. Be really shiny. Like this, and he pulls out a gold coin. Just follow me. And he just continues walking. Okay, um, so you guys are going to walk across and go up to where? The mentioned treasure, treasure room. Yeah, it's not here. That's it's right. across the hall. But got it. I'm going to stop Galahan so I can talk to him real quick. Oh yeah, sure, okay. While the rest of the party continues on. Okay. 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 Galahad, you know how there's clerics and paladins in all these uh, crypts? Mm hmm. Strahd has one in the East Wing with your name on it. It even says reserved for you. You know what? That that does make sense. And I point and I lift up the skull of my dead master and I'm like, "Yes." It seems as though my mentor gave in before I did. Unfortunate, right? Well, I just want to make sure that you knew where Strahd plans on having you spend all eternity. Pretty sure I'd be a broken sack of bones before then, but yeah, thank you for highlighting. Quick, late. Let, let's go catch up with them. All right. Okay, the first thing I do is examine the door or sides of the door for any of those same rooms we saw in the... Uh, crypt. Uh, no, actually. Um, if there were, you would have noticed when you cast Detect Traps. Because it's got a range of like 120 feet. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, no, no runes on the sides of the door, but you once again see the, the golden sigil of an arcane lock. Uh, you try the words again," he says. "Uh, go like go ahead. Sure.
um, man, the, this pronunciation, uh, Thangov and, um, Da, mm, Dahaventon, Dahaviton, Dahaventon. Sure. And so he says Davaton, and when he does, you see the sigil uh, flashes and then breaks, and the door unlocks. No, I push the door. Nope. I mean, if you don't have time, I think that's where we have to end it for today. Okay, great. Yep, that works. Okay. So thank you for coming and hanging out with us, everybody. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did, Make sure you hit that follow button. If you haven't already, check out all the links underneath the stream. There's a schedule so you can see all the days we play on this channel. There's a link to Discord so that you can get involved in a game and play. Uh, and if you enjoy D&D, make sure you come back in the morning. We're going to be playing the Princes of the Apocalypse. Thank you, and see you tomorrow. <laughs>